Vin says, I have a Microsoft 365 Business Basic subscription. I have a Windows Server 2016, which is on-premises. Uh, is it possible to connect uh, these two, so sync users and others? Also, can I get single sign-on with this? Okay, so let's break this down first, okay? I'm going to address my first pet peeve, which Christian corrected for some reason for this user. On-premise um, versus yeah, on-premises. Yeah, know. okay. On-premise is not a word. It doesn't exist in any dictionary. Go well, ahead. no, it, it's it, it's like an author. You know, he, his writing style is on-premise of, you know, like the premise of the story, the point. Like Find that. that in a dictionary and show it to me. Find that <laughs> in a dictionary and I dare you because I, it's nowhere, okay? Um, and especially when you're talking about data centers and stuff, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, so anyways, that taking that out of the thing, okay, my pet peeve, um, let's take a look at, you know, when you talk about the actual server 2016. Why? Because people are still living in, in you know, 1980 and 1990, and they still need to use this old software and never upgrade because they have maybe other software that, you know, you can't upgrade. And on They've integrated yeah. with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and I'll be, you know, the first one to say this is I know a company uh, that I've worked with that's still running Windows XP machines um, yeah. because they they have to. Um, so I get that, all right? Um, but connecting the synchronization all just depends on uh, what you're looking at from an aspect of what you want to sync. I mean, right now you say that you have the 365 Business Basic subscription and you talk about Windows Server, okay? Why would you want to connect Windows Server with a Microsoft 365 subscription, that doesn't make sense. I have to assume that you're talking about Active Directory. If you're talking about Active Directory, okay, then yes, absolutely, you can do that. There are tools that you can do that with, um, like we just talked about in the previous question. Uh, but if you're talking about some other kind of connection, like maybe on that server 2016 box, you're running Exchange on-prem, and you want to connect it to M365? I, I mean, I, I think that the base of the question, <laughs> Finn is asking, you know, I, I like, I, I think it really is that last thing. Like, it's, it's about that single sign on experience. Why well, don't well, once and get to all those different pieces? So, what would be required between that on prem Windows server and. I get it. I get it. And I think you're, you know, you're, you're making the assumption as well because he talks about syncing users. You know, uh, users and others. That could mean exchange. That could mean act. It, it, it could mean many things. Okay, so we'll take it from the, you know, Active Directory syncing those users. All right, and getting SSO. Um, you can't do that natively with a Windows Server on premises. Okay, unless you use Radius. All right, so you can use built-in Radius. All right, uh, um, on a server, and you can have kind of an SSO. Radius is an SSO. Radius is just a database of user IDs and, you know, being able to authenticate. Um, but to get real SSO, you need an actual SSO provider. And, you know, Microsoft is not an SSO provider as far as I know. Um, they are an MFA provider. They provide other forms of security, but they don't actually provide a, a single sign-in unless it's something sitting behind Entra, something sitting behind Active Directory. Okay, um, whereas you get a third party like Okta or some somebody like that, um, they actually can go out and do, I don't know, a couple hundred different kinds of authentication against, you know, different products and different clouds and all that kind of stuff. To my knowledge, you can't do that with Microsoft, um, you know, as a true single sign-on provider. Anybody and else? You can, Go ahead. And where you can, it's probably tied to, like you said, an intra account, not an on premises account. So anywhere yes. where you see a Microsoft account as an opportunity to log in, that's a personal account. Anywhere where you see log in with your work and school credentials, that would be a intra account today so, or a Azure Active Directory account in the past. So I'm, boy, he opened it up, Christian. He opened up, the, you know, he, he opened the door. <laughs> uh, so I got to go there. All right. Um, 
this whole thing also kind of opens up the the uh, kind of, I don't know what you call it, scatterbrained idea of this Microsoft ID and a work or school ID. Um, and whether you know which one to use, when, where, and how, um, it adds to the confusion. So when you, you know, going to another website, as an example, uh, Microsoft owns LinkedIn, Microsoft owns GitHub, right? But when you go to those sites, you can log in with a Microsoft ID, right? So it comes, it comes up and it says, you want to create an account. It gives you an option to use your Microsoft ID, um, which is awesome. The problem is what ID are you using? I've had it where it was like, it would say, enter your Microsoft ID. Well, then I'd put in my you know, work or school account, it would come back and say, this is not a valid Microsoft ID. Um, you know, and you'd, you'd go round and round and round with that. So if Microsoft was an actual SSO identity provider, I would not use it, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> I love the one, too, where it pulls up uh, and it, I've got my work email a couple times. I'm like, which one is it? <laughs> Why are there multiple ones for my work account as part of that as well? And and so you you, you take a guess and maybe yeah. it works. And Sometimes the next you're one right. might work. And I don't know the difference between the two. Yeah. yeah, I just I logged into uh, Confluence, part of Alexian's uh, services, and one of the SSO providers was Microsoft. But then when you click on Microsoft, which doesn't tell you what kind of account you're using, Mike, to your point, it says, would you like to log in as a work and school or a personal account? And um, at least in one of my cases, I do have that account that is in both places. Um, I chose the work and school account and it worked, but I could have potentially used this the uh, personal account that has the same email address. And uh, that nightmare, at least I'm being, um, I'm being made aware of it when I log into this particular account. It says, hey, these two identities are using the same email address, but they're separate identities on the back end. Would you like to fix it? And I believe they've corrected it so that people don't inadvertently create those um, identities in the two places with the same email addresses going forward. But yeah, that's that's going to be a long tail because I don't I don't remember when I set it up or why I set it up but I have an account with a, you know, a, a work email that is both a personal and a Microsoft, you know, 365 or an intra account. I made and, that mistake. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I it's, made that mistake long ago. It's just, I created a Gmail account with my custom domain because Google Workspace was free at the time. Right. And, uh, you know, next thing I know, I add the domain to Microsoft when I got the 365. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, you have the same exact email in two different places. Mail's only being delivered to one of them. But right. when you try and authenticate, it's two different authentication methods, number one. And number two is two different passwords. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, there's no, it's a no-win situation. It is. It's, yep. it's terrible. <laughs> what do you think, Hal? I think you shouldn't be using your an address from one place for email for another. Oh, In fact, yeah, that's true. something that Outlook is going to get. Well, for that matter, they already have. That's the uh, EA. <clears throat> what is that? EASI, email as sign in. That's where you oh, use yeah. your. That's where you up, set up your um, Outlook.com or what have you using, say, a Gmail address. Yeah, in an instance like that, the only thing you can do with it is sign it in. Uh, the mail is not going to come to you. Yeah. And in fact, it confuses things quite a bit from, from doing so because, again, you don't get the email. It, and, and the cure for that, for the most part, is, is you have to go into <clears throat> Outlook.com or whatever and provide an alias. Yeah. And that way makes set the alias as the primary connect method, and that frees up your Gmail address or what have you. Yeah, so that I, you can actually get places and get get your email. I wish I would have known that like 15 years ago when I first created my <laughs> exactly. My, yeah. Everybody, of course. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I've got the opposite kind of a well, maybe it's the same thing. Uh, way back when, there 
when um, when Entra was still yeah it was still Yammer. Yeah, yeah. Um, was it Groove or, or uh, No, no, no. It, it, just just Yammer back in those days. There was you could you could get into that with an MSA account. And, and so there are at least two or three different groups and so forth set up uh, in uh, in that that and I'm not giving it the calling it the right thing and for whatever engage Viva engage, engage thank you Viva yeah. engage thank you um, but there there are several places I've got set up where I can't get there now because when you try to sign in to to Viva engage it, you can't do this unless you have a worker school account and it's like wait a minute I, I've got stuff in here how do I get there. Well, yeah. so far I have found that uh, uh, if I do a password reset kind of a thing, I can kind of convince it to let me in. And also uh, it, the uh, the mobile version of Viva Engage will somehow still, at least the last time I tried, uh, would let me in with an MSA account. Yeah. So it's it, it's a killer. The other thing I would uh, confirm with uh, Vin is that uh, they're actually using Windows Server 2016. Because of the Microsoft 365 Business Basic, I would want to make sure they're not using Small Business Server, which looks like full server, but functions totally different. And uh, anytime I have dealt with that, it's uh, it's like pulling teeth, bringing too much administrative knowledge to Small Business Server, in my experience, is a um, recipe for disaster. I don't even remember if group policies are something that you can run on small business server. So that might be the, um, you know, the the answer to the previous question. If they bring up group policy and you can't do a small business server, you know they're not using it. But it was like a simplified version of a domain and had a domain behind it, but certain aspects didn't work. So I'd want to confirm that with Vin before giving um, advice on how to synchronize or set it up for SSO. 